Do more with Google Workspace. Live from London, October 2023. Oakley, Oakley. So this is Jane. I'd like everybody to meet Jane. Everybody say hi, Jane. <laughs> Jane is a, an a executive assistant at Big Company, really inventive name, and she utilizes Google Workspace to maximize her day. So let's see what Jane is doing on your average Thursday. Okay, so Jane's gonna go into her uh, Gmail, which is her integrated space to work, uh, and she sees she's got an urgent email from Mary, who's her manager, okay? Um, she, Mary's looking to book a one-to-one -one with her, so she's actually sent over a link to book a one-to-one -one, uh, for a, a HR meeting. And when she clicks the link, she can see that actually Mary is using the appointment booking service and she can see all of the available slots. So for Mary, she set up this appointment booking service uh, um, and, and sent it out to all of the people that she wants to um, book appointments with. And we can see that it's, it's forcing Jane to fill out a form. It's automatically filled in some of Jane Austen's information because she's logged into her Gmail account. And then Mary has also put in some required uh, information. So if, if Jane tries to book this, which uh, without filling in the information, it's, it's forcing her to do that. Incidentally, you can use the booking form feature, the appointment booking form feature now connecting it to even a payment. If you're a small business, you want to book appointments and take payments, uh, which is quite cool. So she's booked this appointment now uh, with her pre-filled questions. She moves back into Gmail and she sees that she has a notification in Spaces. Now Spaces in chat is a Google sort of version of Slack for those that hasn't, haven't used it. It's come a long way over the last year or so. She's gone into the um, announcement one, and this is from uh, the big company sort of announcement channel. What's interesting about this is that um, Jane can react or respond with nice little emojis here uh, to the Christmas party. She thinks it's absolutely hilarious, um, but she can't actually post anything in it. So she doesn't have the ability to post a message back because this is an announcement only. So this is a relatively new feature. She goes back into her chat and she sees that there's a message in the senior leadership team. When she goes into this, she can see that there's a task that's been assigned to her with in the actual chat space. So this is a chat space for the senior leadership team. She can go into the tasks and she can see the tasks that have been assigned to her. She's actually done it by assignee, so that, that one goes to the top. There's an urgent contract that needs to be drafted um, for Milton Wadhams. <laughs> um, and she goes into direct chat to chat to Sarah about a PPS number um, for Milton. And when she hits send, a DLP rule runs. Remember we were talking about the DLP, the data loss prevention earlier on, and it said, I'm sorry, but you can't send this information because it's a PPS number. So Google is helping stopping exfiltration of data from your business. And not only that, this message is customizable, and the IT admins, the very clever IT admins at Big Company have said, please, we recommend that you use confidential mode, which is another feature in Gmail that we're gonna demonstrate now. So she goes into Gmail and, and opens up her email, Pace in the information, puts in Mary Shelley's details, and she turns on confidential mode. Now confidential mode, when you turn it on, it will actually change the color, which we'll see in a second, um, of the email so that you know that you're in confidential mode. It defaults to a week, so the message will actually expire after a week, which is great. Uh, and she's added an, an additional layer of security there, which had an SMS code. So not only will it expire after a week, but, but the person receiving the message will need to have an SMS code to just even view the message in the first place. So an additional layer of security there. We can see it's turned blue now because she's in confidential mode, hit send. And this is where it's prompting for Mary Shelley's mobile number. She's gonna put in her mobile number um, and Mary Shelley would need to uh, view the message and then it will prompt her for a, a unique code, okay? Now she's gonna move into shared drives to actually create the contract, okay? And because she's in shared drives uh, in the HR contract, it, the, the document that she's gonna create is gonna inherit all of those lovely permissions that the IT team have set up from the shared drive. She goes into new and she goes into docs um, and she uses templates because this is a HR contract, so obviously there's a template for that. Uh, and when she selects the template, as again, I said it's gonna be saved into the, the shared drive, um, but it's got, variable chips, I always get this one wrong, I say smart chips, variable chips, and the variable chips allow her to very quickly fill out the information for the person. And we can see that this one here, the new starter's name, is actually used six times throughout the document. So she's gonna be very, very quickly able to fill out the entire document. Okay, so so she, she's opened it up, and again, it's inherited the permissions from the shared drive. So because she created the document in the shared drive, it's automatically got the people on it, and, and two of them have view-only access. So now she's gonna send it for approval to her 
manager, Mary. So she goes into approvals and makes an approval request. She puts in the approver, which is Mary Shelley. Uh, she's going to put a little message here. She can also add a due date if she wants. So if this is urgent, I need it done today or this week. So this is a pretty urgent one. So she's going to say it needs to be done by tomorrow. And she can also have two other options, which is to allow the prover to edit the file if they want, so the manager to edit it and lock the file before sending for approval. So she's going to do both of those. And the, the, the Google system is clever enough that Mary Shelley had access. Do you remember we saw her in the shared drive when we went up to the share settings? But she didn't have edit access. She could only view the document. And um, in this example, Jane has said she wants her to be able to edit it. So now Google has, has, has realized that. It's, it's uh, given her permission and it's locked the file there before sending so nobody else can make any changes. Okay. Now she's going to go back to her tasks, which is again in the shared space, the, the shared chat space that she has. And she's going to take that task off because that's done now. And she's going to move on with her day. What's Jane up to next? <laughs> okay, so Jane's going to kick off a top secret project next, okay? And we're going to demonstrate a, a feature here called new.docs or docs.new, which is a, a cool little feature to very quickly uh, create a new document. So this one isn't going to be, this is just going to be created in her My Drive. It's not going to be in any shared drive or anything like that. But we're, we're going to show some other interesting DLP fe features here. So the, the project is called Project Midnight. Uh, she's going to put in the name of the project, which is Project Midnight. And then the next piece is she kind of wants to build in a little bit about the company. Uh, and she has that in another document, but actually Jane is clever enough that she's gone and put it into what Google called building blocks. And we saw some of these earlier on where we saw, um, you know, uh, in, in some of my slides, you saw some of these calendar things and these sort of other building blocks. But Jane has a custom building block. And when she goes into her custom building block, she's got the company vision already there. And the next step is she's going to put in a checklist in here. So she's got some tasks that need to be complete, completed. And she's going to put in, um, uh, so she could do bullet points, but she's going to do the checklist. And what the checklist allows her to do is to assign those tasks. So we saw the tasks being assigned in the spaces. Now we're seeing tasks being assigned um, in the document. So she can actually assign it here uh, to Tom Jones, uh, not the singer. This is the CEO of the company. <laughs> and um, what's interesting here is this is actually going to sync with Tom's tasks. So Tom's going to see this in his own tasks in, in, uh, in, in his Gmail. And also, he, uh, we can set a date, which uh, Jane did there. And he'll also get an email sent to him as well. Now, with Mary's one, she has assigned it to her, but she hasn't assigned a, a date. So it's not necessary to do that. But again, when you assign it to the person, it will sync with the tasks. And the same with the ones in the groups. So you, you can have in the chat groups and, and in the documents all syncing into your tasks. Now, there's something, I don't know if any eagle-eyed people there at the back or the front noticed this little label appearing. Yeah, a few people noticed that. So that appeared when Jane put in the term Project Midnight, because Project Midnight, remember I said it was a super secret project? And the, the, the Clever IT team have set up uh, a rule to say that anything that mentions Project Midnight cannot be shared externally. Okay, so we now have a little exclamation mark and it says, this document contains sensitive content, okay? And so she goes in here and she's gonna to add Tom to this because he's the CEO, he's working on Project Midnight as well. Um, and she's put in a little message to Tom, she's gonna to send it to him, but it's not going to work. So it didn't work because she accidentally added Tom's personal Gmail account. So um, just to kind of go over this a little bit, she created a new document. It was in her My Drive. It wasn't in her shared drive. So obviously users have the ability to create stuff not in shared drives, which means it didn't have all those lovely inherited permissions. But the IT team had set up a DLP rule, a data loss prevention rule that said anything that mentions Project Midnight, we, we, we don't want it to be shared externally. When she accidentally put in Tom Jones's Gmail account, it stopped her from uh, sharing that externally. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. So there's a couple of different things happening. And again, it's all protecting the, the data. So she's going to put in the correct email address now for Tom. And she's going to send that off to him, which is great. Jane's going to go back in at the end of her day to her calendar. And um, she's, she's going to go in here to her calendar. And the last thing she's going to do is she's going to set her office location for tomorrow. So we're talking about hybrid work, we're talking about ways Google can support that. Um, and what this is going to do is it's going to be that soft communication for her team that they're going to know that Jane's in the office tomorrow without having to disrupt her or ask her. And that's it. She's wrapped up her day. Thanks very much, guys. Are you getting the most out of Google Workspace? Let us show you how. Get in touch for your demo today.